I want to know if you believe this morning. I want to know if you believe this morning. Bless God. I want to know that you know you believe. I'm about to have a running fit up here. I believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to end end but surrendered and earth is no more think about it. when time has surrendered and earth is no more I'll still cling to the old rugged cross Amen. when I look out over this congregation this morning and I see 90% of you weeping. When I see hands raised in praise. And when I think about you've never seen this person that you're crying about. When I think that you have never shaken hands with this person that you're so lonesome for this morning. It makes me know that it's real. It makes me know that the Spirit of God is powerful. It makes me know that my God is real. When just the thoughts of His love can send the rivers through the canyons of my soul gushing forth. It makes me know that God is real. Isn't this a wonderful feeling? Have you ever felt anything as good as this? Have you ever experienced anything that you've before like you're feeling right now? But you know what? It would be awful for you to come to a place like this and have these men of God bless your soul until the tears flowed and yet miss heaven and yet miss heaven you know God loves you and we are God's chosen people and we're God's favored people but we can be all of that sometime and not live for him. Did you know it? And miss heaven. I was thinking while I was sitting here weeping and rejoicing. I was thinking what a wonderful, wonderful God he is. And how good he is to us. And how he has favored us and how he has blessed us. 
Then my thoughts turn to how loving and how kind and how compassionate he is. And then my thoughts turn to a people that God loved and favored and showered his blessings on them. And yet, they turned their back on God and thought because of his goodness and because of his favors, they mistook him. And God said to them, he called his prophet Jeremiah and he said, Jeremiah, I want you to go talk to these people. They think because I have favored them and because I have bless them and because they are my favored people that they can trample on my mercies listen here now Jeremiah 8 the 20th verse we find an old familiar passage of scripture that has been used in many a tent meeting and has been used in many a revival meeting and has been preached in many a country church by many of God's country preachers. And it's old and most of you may could, re, uh, could quote this by memory, but listen to me this morning. This is important and this little passage of scripture I hope will stir your heart if you're in need of this stirring this morning. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Did you hear me? The summer, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. You know the picture I get here? The picture I get right here is that God has allowed America to bring in bountiful harvest after harvest after harvest after harvest. God has blessed the American people more and blessed and favored them more than any other people on the face of this earth. He has allowed us to sow and to reap and to have barns and, and places filled with bountiful harvest that he has given us. He has allowed us to enjoy the sunshine of the beautiful summertime. I don't mean that just because summertime, literally June, July, and August, I'm talking about he has allowed the sunshine of success. He has allowed the sunshine of joy. He has allowed the sunshine of pleasure. He has allowed the sunshine of plenty to shine upon the American people. Amen. But God's word said is ended. In Judah, these people that God favored, he had done the very same thing for them. He had allowed them to enjoy the land of plenty. He had allowed them to have joy. He had allowed them to have a sunshine of joy. And yet, while they were his favored people and while God was blessing them like he was blessing them, yet they had turned their backs on God. I want to tell you something this morning. I'm going to use a word that uh, some people don't like to use, but I want to tell you something. These people had backslid. These people had turned their backs on God. God, though he is long-suffering, though he is patient and though he had compassion upon them and many many times he had called them to repentance and yet because his long suffering and his goodness and his mercy had been with these people all down through these years they thought oh he's a God of love he's a God of love he's a God of compassion he's not going to do anything to us he loves us he'll put up with it 
But I want to tell you this morning, while he is a God of love and while he will be long-suffering and while he will call and call and call and call, let me tell you something. He is also a God of wrath. There was a time when these people lived close to God. They worshiped and they served God. They obeyed his commandments. But now they were very sinful and far away from God. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. We call America the land of the Bible. In fact, they say that we people who live in the South live in the Bible belt. I don't know whether that's supposed to be a compliment or whether that's supposed to mean that we're corn pone. But whatever it is, I'm glad if that is whatever the answer might be, I'm glad I live in the Bible Belt, aren't you? Amen? And if they're believing in the Bible and reading the Bible and believing God's Word is supposed to be, makes you some kind of a, a freak, well, they can just call me a freak because I believe in God's Word. But I want to tell you something. We may be in the Bible Belt and America may be called the Christian nation, but America and American people are living in open and rebellious sin before Almighty God today. You take a look at your television and you see on the screen there that the authorities, whoever they might be, are willing to let every kind of conceivable sin and damnable thing come into the living room of the American people's home today. You dare them to turn the television on or you have better get your newspaper if you're going to let your child look at anything and be sure that you pick a program that will not be insulting or offensive to a child. That's just one thing. Walk up and down the streets of the city and see how openly the people of America are flaunting the moral laws of God. Listen, I want to tell you something. It's an abomination. It's an abomination in the sight of God how the morals of the American people have sunk so low until we have gotten to the place almost of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, we're God's favored people, but you listen to me. I want to tell you something. God does not always suddenly cut people off. But as sure as I stand before you this morning, the American people and you people in this building and myself are going to pay before Almighty God because our morals have sunken to an all-time low. It's not only the sinful people who are walking the streets of the non-church people. I'm speaking also to the church people this morning. I'm speaking to those of you who belong to a church somewhere, but you have as surely backslidden and on your road to hell as I stand in this pulpit this morning because of your sinful ways. This is not popular, and I'm not going to get a lot of amens, but I hope I get a lot of bended knees before this service is over. Look around you, America. Look around you, church member. Look around you, Christian friend, and see where we are headed. God's favorite people, Christian America. It almost makes me sick sometimes when I read in the newspaper that this uh, president or that governor or some organization has declared a prayer day. It's almost a mockery in, fa in the face of God. I want to tell you, 365 days out of the year ought to be declared by every Christian a prayer day. Why do we? Why do we as American people have to have a proclamation one time a year to talk to God? I want to tell you if you are, are a church member this morning, if you claim them and profess to be a Christian this morning, you better be on speaking terms with your God every day of your life. Because I want you to know you need to talk to Him every day. Favored people blessed people, P 
people of plenty and yet we are on our way to hell as fast as we can run unless we turn our faces toward God and beg his forgiveness and listen to his servants as they proclaim the gospel and as they uh, ask us and beg us and plead with us to heed the call and the voice of God living in open sin and rebellion to God I want you to know that God is concerned about you this morning I want you to know that God is concerned about America this morning God is concerned about the morals of his people in America today God is not only concerned but God is grieved over the way that you and I are playing religion today God is grieved his heart is broken because of your life and my life this morning oh we can come together and it's thrilling and it's a joy and it's a pleasure and it's ever wonderful feeling that I can think of to hear the song sung about Jesus and it makes the tears roll down my cheeks but what am I going to do about Jesus tomorrow when there's no singing around and when it comes to Time for me to get on my knees and live the life that Jesus would have me to live. I want you to know you can get in a meeting like this and tears will roll and the emotions are stirred. But listen, I want you to know there's more to salvation than stirred emotions. There's more to finding Jesus as your Savior than stirred emotions. Oh, I think that emotion goes with knowing Jesus. I think you can, uh, I don't believe you could know him without getting excited. I don't think you could think about the goodness of God without getting excited. But let me tell you something, dear friends, this morning. Jesus wants us to live the life before men that men might see and know that he is God. What am I trying to say to you this morning? I'm trying to say to you this morning that the harvest is past. That the summer is ended and a lot of us are still holding on to somebody else's joy that spilled over on us. I had a man come to me one night and he said, you know, I never come to one of these singings that I don't cry. And he said, I feel so good, and people around me cry, and I cry, and I, I, and I feel good. And right then he said, I feel like I got religion. But he said, when I go home, and the next day I'm not around those people, and I don't hear that singing, he says, I know I'm lost. Did you know that's a trick of the devil? That's a trick of the devil. If he can get you to shed a tear or two, and if he can get you stirred up emotionally, he's going to make you think that you're all right. He'll say, see there, you were crying. Don't you see? You feel this thing. You've got it. But I want to tell you that's a lie of Satan. And he will continue to deceive you that way until he drags your soul into hell, if he possibly can. But I want to tell you one thing this morning. Unless you confess your sins with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus has saved you, you will never have salvation. And you know why we have this moral decay? And you know why? that America is in open sin and rebellion? Do you know why there are so many church members that are not living the kind of life that they ought to be living? Is because they can go once in a while and have a little bit of a, uh, an emotional stir and their cup runs over a little bit and they get to thinking about what it used to be like and their conscience is soothed and they go on in open sin. If the devil can soothe your conscience ever so often and make you think that everything's all right, that's as good as he'd have. But the scripture says we've got to live it every day. 
And you know, I think the most miserable person in this world is a fellow that's straddling the fence. Trying to have one foot on the world's ground and one foot on God's ground. He's miserable. And you know, I was talking to a fellow a songwriter one day and he said, you know, I just wish that the sea was the Holy Spirit. I wish the sea was the Holy Spirit. And the Lord had let a tree grow up right by the side of the seashore and then let a limb go way out over in the ocean so I could climb up that tree and climb out on that limb and just fall out in the Holy Spirit of God. Now this is what God wants, you know. Just splash down in the middle of the Holy Spirit of God and let God's Spirit just get all over us. And when we let God's Spirit just engulf us and just get all over us, then we begin to really know what salvation is all about. God was grieved. He was grieved. And He's grieved over your condition this morning. If you're lost or if you're backslidden this morning, He's grieved over your condition. And He's going to try to talk to you about it. And He's talking to you now about it. God is pointing down and saying, listen, listen. Listen now what Jeremiah 7, 1 and 3. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Now, he's saying, Jeremiah, go and stand at the gates. And as they come in, Jeremiah, I want you to tell them that I know about their sins. Tell them, Jeremiah, that I know the kind of life they're living. They're not fooling me one bit. something God is saying to you this morning I don't have to know what your life is like but God knows every sin in your life God knows every sin in your life it matters not where that sin was conceived God knows about it. if it was behind closed doors and nobody but you, you think know about it, God knows about it. If it was out in the open, God knows about it. Every secret sin in your heart and in your life, God knows about it this morning. And God has sent His servant here to tell you that He knows about it. And I'm coming to tell you that Jesus is grieved because of your sin. His heart is broken because of your sin. Now here's what he said to say. He said, stand in the gate and tell them I know about their sins. But if they will amend their ways, in other words, if you'll change. In other words, if you'll repent of your sins. I'll let you dwell in this place. Where's you going to dwell? In the house of God. That's right. But God first wants you to wash and be clean. He wants you to clean up your wicked ways, get rid of your sin. And then you can dwell in the house of the Lord. God has always given His people a chance to repent. Did you know that? God loves you. We are God's favored people. And although we have broken His heart by trampling on His mercy and His goodness, He still wants to see us saved. He still wants to see his children brought back into the fold. What did he say one time? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered you together as a hen doth her brood, but she would not. 
I want you to get the picture this morning. Hear me now. Oh, God, help us. God knows about your sin, and He loves you, and He's calling you to repentance. Israel failed to repent. God led Israel out of Egypt with a high hand. And he worked among them in a very marvelous way, revealing himself as one who loved and cared for. But they hardened their hearts and turned away from God. Now he's given you an opportunity this morning to be saved. You have heard gospel singing, you have cried, you have been touched, you have been stirred. But I pray right now, oh God, that the Holy Spirit of God would come into this place and convict everyone who is in a backslidden condition and may every sinner in this house this morning look out and see the day of judgment as this day. And say, oh God, before I'm turned into hell, forgive my sins and save my soul. Because I want you to know God is a God of love and he's calling, he sent his servant to tell you about it. He's grieved, his heart is broken. But he's saying this morning, if you'll turn around, if you'll change, if you'll quit your sinful ways, if you'll repent, I will let you dwell in the house of the Lord. But what about it? What if you walk out of his, this convention again this year like you did last year, still in your sins, still with a hardened heart, still unable to say to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. There's a better life with God. If you walk out of here again just as Judah rejected God, just as Egypt, Israel I was not willing to live for God. What will God do about it? Upon the authority of God's holy word, I want you to listen. After God had sent Jeremiah, and after Jeremiah had stood at the gates, after Jeremiah had extended the hand of God to these people and told them God loved them and God wanted them to live right and if they would amend their ways and if they would live right that they could dwell in the house of the Lord. And after they rejected this plea, we find the Lord saying, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up crying or prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Don't even lift up a cry for them. Don't come to me and make intercession for them. They were my favored people. I let them prosper and they had plenty. Many harvests brought forth mountiful and bountiful plenty. I let them enjoy the sunshine of the summer days. I let them have happiness and they had families and they had beautiful children and they had the things and the necessary things of life like you have got this morning. And God's blessings were on them. But he said the summer is in and they're not saved. So what did he do? One more time. He sent his messenger. God's man stood in the gate. And I want you to know this morning, not by any righteousness that I might have acquired, because I am nothing. I want you to know I mean that this morning. I feel about that high when John Macduff and Don, all these other fellows gathered, Brother Carl, when they gathered around me this morning, I felt not like this. Because the power of God came down and these men prayed over me and laid hands on me.
And I know I'm not worthy to stand in this place right now. But I want you to know I was God's messenger this morning. Regardless of my ability, regardless of my righteousness, regardless of what, God sent me to stand in the gate for you this morning. And he said to me, Hovey, I want you to tell my people at the convention that I know about all their sins. They're not hiding nothing from me. They may think that they still have the respectability and on the outside they do, but they know on the inside that they've lost it. They know on the inside that, they're, that their heart is black with sin. I want you to tell every sinner in that auditorium this morning that I love them. I want you to tell every person that's gone out and backslid and gotten cold and indifferent away from God, I want you to tell them I love them this morning. But I also want you to tell them that if they don't repent, that you need to come back to me and intercede for them again. Because I will not hear you. I will not hear you. Don't cry over them if they don't repent. Don't come back to me for intercession because I will not hear you. That's God's word in the book of Jeremiah. And I say to you this morning, I have never felt quite like this at a National Quartet Convention on Sunday morning. I feel strange. I feel strange that some are getting the last warning. I want to tell you people something. Our world is in such a mess. Did you know we're in a mess? Did you know we're in a mess in America? We've taken everything for granted until this thing has caught up with us. Immorality Sin, lawlessness, rioting, scared to walk down the streets that you used to walk down, scared to go any place anymore, full of fright. I was talking to some lady the other day and she said, I used to think nothing of walking to the grocery store, now I won't even walk down to the corner. I can remember the time when my wife would get in the car and drive downtown and not lock the doors, even how the windows down. I can remember the time when I'd get into a city like this and couldn't sleep and I'd walk the streets, talk to God and look at the stars. I'm afraid to do that now. We are in the end time as sure as I stand on this platform this morning. We are nearer to eternity than you would ever dare think this morning. Every sign that I can think of points to the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friends, I want to tell you, I'd hate to know that because of the stubbornness of your heart and the unwillingness of your soul to give up your sin, that you'd be damned and lost to a devil's hell. What all of this is about? Oh, what is all of this about? You've had four days before this day of gospel singing, of these singers pouring out their hearts. And if you haven't been warned, if you have not been pricked in your heart by the Spirit of God, if you have not had the gospel preached to you, you can never stand before God and say, I didn't know. You can't stand before God. It's better that you never heard the gospel than for you to go away from here this morning with one sin in your life. Scripture said it's better you never heard. Because to have heard and to know to do right and do it not is a sin. That's a sin within itself. I'm calling to you this morning. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Every head bowed and every eye closed. I mean business this morning, folks.
Do you? Every head bowed and every eye closed. And God have mercy on you if you leave this building. Unless it's an emergency before we finish. God have mercy on you. Do you know what the scripture says? He says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. I could have preached on heaven this morning. I could have preached about the new Jerusalem. But let me tell you something. The saints of God might have shouted up and down this aisle. But did you know we've got an eternity to shout and praise God? But time is running out for the saints of God on this earth to get the sinners saved. I want every Christian person in this house to pray right now to yourself. Jesus is coming. I don't care how much it hurts your pride this morning or who you are or what your name is. It matters not to me if you're a gospel singer or if you're a lover of gospel music that nobody knows or if you're prominent or whoever you might be. If you need God this morning, you ought to come because he's in this house. He's in this house. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I want to ask you a question. How many in here say this morning, Brother Hovey, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if death should overtake me, or if the Lord should come before I get home today, I'm ready to meet him. Would you lift your hand? Thank you. Thank you. All right, I want the rest of you now to be just that honest. Those of you that say this morning, Brother Hovey, I know there's sin in my life. I'm a church member. I belong to a church. I'm really a decent person, but I know that there's something I'm doing that God isn't pleased with. And I know that if the Lord should come or death should overtake me before I get home, I have my doubts about whether I'd be ready. And I want you to pray in this closing prayer for me. Would you lift your hand? Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. I don't care who you are. God bless you. All over the house. How about the balcony up here? I need prayer. I know there's sin in my life. I know there's sin in my life. Now I want to say just one thing further. Don't let pride damn your soul to hell. Don't let pride Send your soul to hell. I want to, I want you to listen. This is God. This is us. This is this is reality. And oh, I have such a burden this morning. I felt it ever since I walked in that front door. Somebody, somebody, maybe more than one, is receiving their final call this morning. Oh, God have mercy. How many of you will say, Brother Holy, I know I'm not right with God. I need God. Would you lift your hand? Come on, right quick. All over this building. All over. Come on, right now. Don't wait. Just step out. Come on. Everybody that knows you need God, come on. I don't want no more hands raised. I want you to come. No use in us going through that. Come on. Come on. I want everybody that knows you need God. I'm not going to ask you what the sin is. Don't care what the sin is. I don't care how big, how bad, how little. Everybody that needs God. Come on. Come on. Everybody that knows you need God this morning. I'm not saying you're sinful. not saying you belong to church. I don't know where you've ever been saved. Backslide or what? Come on. You need God this morning. Come on. You know you do. Come on. Come on. Right now. Step out. Don't let Satan. Don't let Satan rob you now. He'll deceive you and damn your soul, sure as we're standing here today. I want you to come on if you know you need God. Everybody stand. Everybody stand all over this house. You know you need God. Come on, right now. I want every hand that was raised and said, I don't know whether I'd be ready to go or not. I want you to come while we sing this one verse. We're going to have this closing prayer together right here. Come on. Right on down the front. That's right. Come on. No one leaving till we finish now. Softly and tenderly, Jesus. Come on, sing is it out. Calling, calling for you and for me. I 
don't think you understood me. We're waiting for you to come for prayer. Come on. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, oh watching us and for We're waiting for you in the balcony. Come on, we're waiting. We got plenty of time. Those of you who raise your hand, come on, let's have this prayer together. Your friends will wait for you. Come on, step out. Step right out, folks. Jesus is calling, calling all sinners. Oh, come on, we're waiting. Now give me just a minute, would you? Just one minute, every head bowed and every eye closed. And I want you to listen to me. Please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I want you to listen just a moment. There are those you here this morning that you know you're standing by a person that needs God. Did you know it's your Christian obligation to speak to that person and say, won't you come down to do, go, let me go with you to prayer. If you're standing by somebody this morning that you know needs God, it's your Christian obligation to turn to that person and say, come on, let's walk down there for prayer. Husband, if you have an unsaved wife, wife, if you have an unsaved husband, don't you think enough of his soul to snatch it from the flames of hell just by turning and saying, let's walk down for prayer. Come on. They're coming. They're still coming. Mother, have you got an unsaved child this morning? Don't you love that child enough that you'd turn to it and say, come on, honey, let's go down for prayer. Come on, they're coming. Come on while I'm talking. Listen, son. Listen, daughter. Maybe you've got a mother or a father here this morning that don't know Jesus. Do you want them to die and go to hell? No, you don't. Turn to that mother. Turn to that father. And say, come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Let's go down and pray. I want you to know there's others here that God has told me that need prayer. I'm not a prophet, but I know. I know when God puts a burden on. Every person in this building this morning that wants to be remembered in prayer, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, while the Christian people are praying, every person in this building that needs prayer and you know you're not saved, lift that hand and say, pray for me. Come on, one more time. Let's see him. Let's see him. Let's see him. Lift him high. In the balcony, we're waiting for you to come down. We've got plenty of time. God bless all of those hands. Now let me say to every one of you, raise the hand. Hadn't you rather go out of here knowing that Jesus lives and dwells within your heart than to go out of here saying, oh, I don't know whether I'll make it home or not? I don't know whether I'll make it home or not. Come on, Jesus is tenderly calling. And while we wait, I want every one of you to step out. I want you personal workers to speak to these people that may need a little courage and encouragement to come forward. I'm begging you to come. They're still coming. We're waiting for you out of the balcony. We've got plenty of time. We're going to sing another verse of this song. And I want every person here that knows you need God to come. They're still coming. Come on, sing it, Brother Don. Why should Everybody we sing. Come on. Mary when Jesus here they come. Yes, they're coming. Oh, thank you, Jesus. They're coming this morning. Come on. You need prayer. Come on. For me. Why should we and he not yes they're coming they're weeping they're walking the aisles come on we're waiting for you in the Bible personal workers speak to these people encourage them to come and for me i 
pour you out of the balcony. Just a moment. While these are still coming and while they're still walking the aisles, I want to ask you a question. I want to speak to every married woman in this building this morning. Listen to me. I want to ask you ladies this morning, every lady here that has an unsaved husband, I want you to raise your hand. Come on. Every lady here that has an unsaved husband. All right. I want you to come if you've got an, if he's not with you, I want you to come and stand here in his place this morning for prayer. Come on. If he is with you, ask him to come this morning. Would you do it? I want every lady that is married and has an unsaved husband, if you love him, if you think anything in the world of for him, and I'm going to wait for you to come out of the balcony too. Every lady here that has an unsaved husband, I want you to come and stand in his stead right here this morning. Stand at the gate. That's what God is calling you to do this morning. God is calling you to stand at the gate and stand in the gap for him. Now, if he's with you, I want you to bring him down here. Would you do it? I'm waiting for you ladies in the balcony that has unsaved husbands. I'm waiting for you to come. I'm waiting for you to come. Now, I want every man here this morning, every man here this morning that has an unsaved wife, I want you to raise your hand. Come on. Is there any man here this morning that has an unsaved wife? Bring her with you, son. Bring her with you, sir. If she's not here, you come stand in her place. If there's a man here this morning that has an unsaved wife, if she's with you, bring her with you. If she's not with you, I want you to come stand in her place. I want you to come stand in her place. Sinners are still coming. Those who need prayer are still coming. They're still walking these aisles. Unsaved people and people in backslidden condition are still coming. We're waiting for you. We're going to wait too. We're going to wait. I wish that God right now would give me the words. I, I, there's a peculiar kind of unsaved person. There's a peculiar kind of backslider. Now I want you to listen to me. Just a minute. I want everybody to listen just a minute. This is on my heart and I've, never, I've thought about it a thousand times and I've tried to get God to give me the words to say. And I hope he's going to do it right now. Listen to me. There is a peculiar kind of, of person who needs God. That person is respectable in their community, well thought of, well liked, and really not openly immoral, not openly rebellious, and not openly sinful. But that person and there's a lot of them. Our church members go to church, but they have sin in their lives, and they are tormented inside to the point that it nearly drives them crazy. And they are ashamed or got too much pride to come to a mourner's bench and let God fix it for them. Are you hearing me? I said that person is not openly immoral, that person is a good person, well liked, well respected, and a church member. But you know who you are this morning. And you know that you're tormented inside because of sin. And yet you let pride stand in the way. You let the devil tell you you can't afford to go up there because people think you are all right. And you go on like that and finally wind up in a box somewhere in a funeral home and your soul in hell. Because you let pride stand in the way and keep you from getting your soul right with God. I want us to pray right now that every person in this building I don't care how well respected you are, how long you've belonged to a church. If you've got sin in your life, nobody needs to know what that sin is but you and God. But if you've got sin in your life, come on. Before you wind up in a box in a cemetery somewhere in your soul in hell. I'm getting down to the meat of this. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to whitewash it. I'm going to say it like it is. 
going to tell it like it is. You're here this morning and you're decent, respectable people. But you got some skeletons in your closet and you know it. And maybe nobody else but you and God knows it, but you know it. And it's damning your soul and sending you to hell. Because you've got too much pride to let the world know that you need a little bit of help from God. I'm going to pray. And while I pray, I want every one of you who have a need from God, regardless of what it is. I'm not going to ask you. I want you to step right up here. And if you don't have enough courage to step to the front of this place, then you must not want salvation. But I'm going to tell you there's a day coming, friend, when you won't care if the eyes of the world see you're going to run and hide and cry for the rocks to fall on you because you missed your chance to make it to heaven. This invitation is extended to those backstage as well as those out here. I'm extending this invitation to the people that are gathered backstage to come to let's make this one quartet convention where we all were honest with one another and admit our needs if you have a need while i pray i want you to step to this front every head bowed never eye closed slip out of your place where you are you know who you are decent respectable church member but you have a need this morning i'm gonna pray and ask god to give you the courage to step up here for this prayer Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, how we love you this morning. And oh, God, we feel burdened for this special kind of person that has a need this morning. The decent, respectable person, well-liked, well-thought-of, member of a church, but yet in a backslidden condition because of sin. Oh, God, this morning, quicken the spirit and help them to see their need. Give them the courage to walk boldly down this aisle and say, Jesus, only you need to know my need, but you know my need this morning, and I want you to fill it. Save my soul from hell. Take away the frustration and the worry that's within my heart because of this thing. And I know that if I'll confess it to you, Lord, you will forgive my sins and you will work out my problems. Jesus, Jesus. Let them come, Lord, while our heads are bowed. While we meditate in prayer, Lord, let them walk down. Oh, God, if it takes the rest of the day to get one soul out of the flames of hell, let us be willing to stand here till every person who has a problem and has a need has walked this aisle and stands facing you asking for forgiveness. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because I know they're going to come. Thank you, Jesus, because I know they're going to walk these aisles. Decent, respectable people, church members that are well-liked, people that are loved by their neighbors, but yet they have sin skeletons in their closet. And God, I don't want to know what those sins are, and the world don't need to know what those sins are. Only you know and need to know because you're the only one that can forgive them, Lord. Oh, Jesus, let them walk the aisles this morning. Let them get rid of that trouble in the heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Every person here this morning that has a lost loved one and you want to come with this crowd and let us have our closing prayer. Brother Coleman or John Lund We'll come and give our post in prayer. But if you have a lost loved one, I want you to come and stand in the gap for him, will you? Do you love that lost loved one? Do you? They're still coming for, for salvation. Brother Carl, they're still coming for salvation. Come on, every one of you have a lost loved one. This is our annual way of praying for those lost loved ones. We do it every year. And I wouldn't dare close this meeting without 
without it this morning come on waiting for you we're gonna wait for you move right up all of you move right up now when we're through with this prayer I want every one of you who have had a need that have come for a need this morning although you may feel that your need has been met oh God thank you Jesus I have a request this morning. I see my wife standing down here. My wife is standing here. My father-in-law is gravely ill. Listen to me a minute. My father-in-law is a good old hard-working man. But he's gravely ill. Ethel's father is a humble man. He worked hard all of his life, but he don't know Jesus. I visited him in the hospital last week. I talked to him about Jesus, and I'm sure she stands here this morning in his behalf. And I want all of you people who know I'll pray. Pray that he'll be touched this morning as well as all of the loved ones that you stand to represent this morning yes. and that he might be saved yes. come on brother John yes. are there any others backstage this morning that would like to join this group of people for prayer this morning or in behalf of some loved one is there there's still some of you that didn't come that God is going to deal with severely because you know the sin in your life Everyone move forward so that these people in the aisle can get out here. <laughs> oh, Jesus, look down on this scene this morning. Look down on this scene. They're still coming. Must, must. <laughs> We got time to wait for you. Let me plead with that special kind of person that has a need this morning to come. Oh, Jesus, touch. There's a special kind of person that needs. They're still coming. Come up just as close as you can. I want every one of you people, everybody that's come here, I don't care if you've got somebody waiting for you. If you just came to stand in the place for someone else, I want you to go with me and Brother Carl when we finish this prayer. I want you to go through those doors to my left. Would you look? Everybody look to my left. Right over this way. I don't care if you came in behalf of another sinner. I want you to go to that prayer room with us this morning because we're going to have a camp meeting in a minute. Come on, Brother John McDuff, a man whom I have the utmost confidence and faith in. I want him to pray the prayer of deliverance and the prayer for the need this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed Redeemer, we stand in your presence this morning unworthy of the least of your favor master there are those who have driven to this convention from hundreds and hundreds of miles away I think of the man who told me here this morning who said John I drove over 900 miles to this convention, but I came more for something more besides singing. I came here to make a decision today. Now I've got to go back to Liverpool, Ohio, and admit that I was wrong. Oh God, this morning, I ask you to touch every heart in this place. 
Don't let one life be passed by. Don't let one soul go to hell. Don't let one little boy, one little girl, one teenager, or one adult be lost today. Meet every need of every broken heart. I ask you to minister this morning to Hovey's father-in-law. Jesus, walk into that room. Walk into that room at this 12, 20 o'clock hour. And may he sense your divine presence as we've sensed you from the time we walked into this building today. Holy Spirit, let the Shekinah glory of God fill this place. Don't let one of us leave Memphis, Tennessee the same as we were when we came. Start a fire burning. Send revival to America. Let it start right here in these lives, in these hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I wonder if you would please go with us, every one of you, into this room for about 10 minutes and we'll let you go. I'd like for every one of you to. We'd like to hear the, I'm sure there's some of you'd like to make a, a request for prayer. You'd like to make it out loud to us. And Brother John is going, the Macduff brothers are going with us over to this room, right straight across, if you will. Even those of you who came for prayer for someone else, would you please go with us for just a minute? We'd like to have you for just a moment. If you will do that, please, right through this door, all the way across, that's right, right into that room, all of those who've come, move right quickly and we won't keep you but just a moment, and I'm sure that if you have friends that were with you this morning, they'll wait for you, they'll wait for you right where they were sitting, and we'll let you go in just a moment, but right through this door, everyone who has a need this morning, who's had a need, won't you come right with us now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Brother John Hall, if you will, go with us. Thank you. Those who are not going into the prayer room, very quietly return to your seats. The singing does not stop. We're going right on with the singing. Return as quietly and as quickly to your seats as possible if you're not going into the prayer room. Go right on with the singing and listen now as we sing, open your heart and let him in. Oh, 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 oh,
Jesus.